So I said something the other day. Um, here, let me read you guys the tweet. I think this is like pretty banal. I think this is pretty obvious. I think this is a, a, a view that everybody's known I had for for years and years. Um, I said the kind of president. Uh, Shu on head tweeted that I'm not I'm not interested in literally any up and coming Democrat, any possibility. She said there is currently not a single Democratic politician or possible candidate that I like or am excited about. Now that is a sentiment that I share. That's exactly how I feel about it. I'm not excited about any of them. I'm not really interested in any of them. That's a terrible place to be in, isn't it? Um, so I quote tweeted that and said, I just want a New Deal Democrat uncorrupted by big money, who isn't stupid ultra woke, and is a leader who gives zero fucks about media and elite backlash, and somehow this is more rare than a Sasquatch. So I said that. Um, and you'd be surprised the number of people who took issue with that. Now, by the way, I continued and said, Here's the message summed up of a potential candidate who would be awesome. I'm going to end the wars, give everybody health care and higher wages, and if you stand in my way, you're an enemy of the people, and I'll fuck you up politically. That's it. That's, that's the gist. Summed up in one sentence. That's the gist of what I'm looking for. And I don't see anybody. I don't see anybody who really fits this description. Now, the biggest um, critique that folks have of this sentiment is like, why'd you put in the isn't stupid ultra woke thing. Well, I have an answer to that. Um, what was in my mind as I added that? This. So this is from the Women's March. They tweeted the following. This was on uh, November 23rd. We apologize deeply for the email that was sent today. 1492 was our average donation amount this week. It was an oversight on our part to not make the connection to a year of colonization, conquest, and genocide for indigenous people, especially before Thanksgiving. They're apologizing for an email where they told people their average donation was $14.92. Because $14.92 might be traumatic and trigger people and make them think about indigenous genocide and colonization and conquest and Christopher Columbus. Now, listen, is Christopher Columbus a piece of shit? Oh, yeah, all the historical accounts of him are, he's a colossal piece of shit. And I have no love or sympathy for any of the right-wingers who try to rehabilitate him or, you know, Ben Shapiro with that Daily Wire video years ago that was like, actually, genocide is good. And, uh, like, that's true. And it's also true that this sort of shit is psychotic. People on the left need to realize there's a time and a place to tell people, fuck off, you're being ridiculous. This is one of those times right here. Now, I have another example, because you might say, okay, but this is just a one-off. This is It is not a one-off. This is an actual problem in activist left spaces. It is. Here's another great example of it. Do you remember when Ilhan Omar tweeted um, about APAC? So, the Israel lobby. She said, it's all about the Benjamins. Now, the point she's making is the same point she makes in regards to Saudi Arabia, any of the Gulf states, any, uh, you know, any corporate lobbies. The point is, they're doing legalized bribery and they're doing corruption and they give money to politicians and then politicians do their bidding. That's the point. Oh, it's all about the Benjamins. With APAC, with Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia uh, gives money to Donald Trump through his hotel, then Donald Trump approves a multi-billion dollar weapons deal for Saudi Arabia. It's all about the Benjamins there. So this is the way Washington works. It's all about the Benjamins. She said it in regards to APAC, the Israel lobby. And she was immediately accused of anti-Semitism by virtually the, the media, the, like all of elite media, and the entire Republican establishment, and even like half of the Democrats were like, anti-Semitism, you better apologize. That's what this is. And at the time, so at the time, of course, I'm out there like, are you guys fucking crazy? What she's saying is the most obvious thing in the world. She's talking about corruption. She's talking about legalized bribery. This has nothing to do with the stereotype of Jews and money or whatever. No, it's about they're not magically exempt from the same corruption and legalized bribery that plagues Washington with every other government and every other corporate entity and every other PAC. They're not exempt from that. They can't just pull an identity card and then hide behind it. And that's what they were trying to do. So you would think, so I was out there defending it. There were a handful of others who were out there defending Ilhan Omar and saying, are you guys fucking crazy? What are you, what are you pretending here? You know who didn't defend Ilhan Omar? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who went out there and tried to split the difference 
oh, we need to hear the voices of the marginalized communities who say they're hurt by the language, and she didn't come, in a, come to a strong defense of Ilhan Omar. She didn't. Because there's this instinct on the left, whenever anybody makes a claim of, like, bigotry or xenophobia or hurt feelings, it's like, you must bow at the altar of the bigotry or xenophobia or hurt feelings and always consider it legitimate. Well, what if it's not fucking legitimate? The 1492 shit, to be upset about that, is not legitimate. And there were probably three people in the entire fucking country and the entire activist left grounds to a halt because this is stupid ultra-wokeness. Now, if you don't see the problem, it's because you don't want to see the problem. That is a problem. Stop pretending it's not a fucking problem. So, that's the issue here that I'm talking about. And as long as you have lefties who don't have a backbone and aren't willing to say, okay, now you're being ridiculous, then the left is always going to lose. Because the entire country looks at this and goes, <laughs> you guys are fucking idiots. Actual voters look at this like, yeah, you guys want to control anything? You guys are children. Always talking about your fifis and how you're hurt and this. This isn't what leaders do. Now, does this mean that there's no such thing as racism or bigotry and that we shouldn't address systemic inequalities? Of course fucking not. Of course not. Don't misconstrue what I'm saying, which is, by the way, the first thing everybody fucking does. But what it does mean is, don't immediately genuflect at the altar of any criticism of bigotry or xenophobia or hurt feelings or whatever. Every now and then, you gotta puff your chest out and say, you're full of shit. And you can shut the fuck up. You can go right on to shut the fuck upsville. And, unfortunately, nobody does that on the left. And so, you know, we're left with, um, oftentimes what we have is politicians who might be correct on the economic stuff and on the foreign policy stuff, but then, like, any popular support they have, they just blow on the battlefield of wokeness. And, again, if you don't see that, it's because you don't want to see it. Sorry. So, you know, I might get criticism over this segment, but this is a real problem on the activist left. And I've witnessed it firsthand a million times. You gotta remember, you know, when... Back when we founded Justice Democrats, now of course what they are now is, don't even get me started, they're a joke, but I witnessed it firsthand with Cenk Uger when they dug up his like old blog posts and everybody, uh, you know, they, they, the staff literally did a mutiny and they were like, it's him or us. Because in the year 2000, he wrote like jokes on a blog. Don't tell me that's not stupid ultra wokeness run amok. And that's, again, I'm just giving a sprinkle of examples here. You know that the list is fucking endless. So, that's why I made the claim. That's why I said, all I want for president is a New Deal Democrat, uncorrupted by big money, who isn't stupid ultra-woke, and is a leader who gives zero fuck about media, zero fucks about media and elite backlash. And unfortunately, this is more rare than a Sasquatch. But that's the path to victory. It's not that difficult. Um, you guys tell me if I'm missing anybody, if there is somebody on the horizon that, that fits that, but if there is, I certainly don't see him.